Um, good day. My name is James Akema. I think I think you'll be able to pronounce that. Um, I'm presenting my paper titled Digital Humanities and Discursive uh, Complexity of Colonial Literature. James, you can call me James. Okay. So colonial letters are a means of communication among colonial masters in major parts of the world, especially Africa between the 18th century and the 19th century. Okay, it serves as a medium of exchanging thoughts, feelings, information, and and so on between the colonial masters and the colonized subject or among the colonized subjects themselves or the colonial masters. So it's also serves as a reliable source for analyzing African encounter with Europe and if you like America to the letters, historical and cultural values. Um, this study is based on the fact that scholars like Achimbe, Rajan, and then Anna Ford have been engaged in the, the colonial history and the antiquities, you know, that has to, that, and what benefit can we, uh, I, I, I was interested in the fact that what, what, what we learn, have to learn from this, but I then observed that colonial literature, um, which I, in the in the recent colonial letters uh, is I, I consider it as one of the very important antiquities that one can actually explore. So I, I then discovered that uh, the linguistic complexity uh, of these letters remain under study. And then when I attended, I discovered also that digital documentation in developing nations such as Nigeria still remains a uh, mirage. And then to do this, I intended collecting archive colonial letters in Nigeria or those that relate to Nigeria. I, my intention is to investigate the various discursive or pragmatic patterns that shape this complexity. What makes them complex? And then what can we learn from them? So, um, and I also want to examine the, uh, how they assist in the understanding of colonial thought and then interrogate the, effect, the effectiveness of this letter to modern day uh, pedagogy and the potential for the description of African sociocultural and the linguistic values in the study location. Okay, but before going further, I want to quickly look at the state of uh, digital humanities in Africa, uh, especially Nigeria. And if you find, you, if, you, if, you, if you try to search, you find that in Africa, South Africa happens to be the leading voice in DH practice. Uh, they have uh, some centers, the prominent among them is Sadila, and then uh, some, uh, some projects in other university. And then in other, con uh, other countries in Africa, we have Nigeria, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Kenya, and a few other African countries engaging the DH practice, although in a very um, uh, primary, is at the primary stage. But recently, um, uh, the, the, the vibe, if I may say, is beginning to pick up in Nigeria as um, we now have um, a DH project in Southwest, uh, which is Center for Digital Humanity at the University of Lagos. And then the other one is in North Central Center for Digital Archive of African Modern Tongue Languages at a university in Kwara State. Um, and if you ask me, you see, this is nothing to uh, really celebrate here. What that means is that uh, digital humanity is still very, very far. Uh, uh, is at infancy right here. And then some of the problems uh, associated with this uh, days. Um, economy, infrastructure, government policy, politics of employment, that is the kind of people that are employed, uh, do, uh, you know, there are different things, social cultural uh, issues that re really guide employment. What about obsolete archival culture? Uh, then there is lack of standard method of access to these uh, archival centers, the existing archival centers that are nearly analog, uh, and then the attitude of the staff there, but uh, the good news is that some of these are changing. And well, I visited two centers to gather my data. Um, 
this is one, but I have um, a not very good experience in one of them, and I would like to quickly show us something about that. So I got to this place. Can you hear the audio? Or I need to say something? Okay. So, so this is uh, Digital Humanity Centers Center in one of these the uh, state of the country. I got to this place. There was nobody to actually meet to to consult anybody, and then I was there for hours waiting, and then I couldn't really get anybody. So I had to leave. So um, then, is incidentally, I got in some other states uh, of the country, and then these are the method if you need to get. Uh, uh, any data, say colonial letters from uh, uh, any national repository in Nigeria, you have to apply to the center. Am I still on, please? Hello? Yes, we're yes. following you. You're doing you great. Okay. You're good. Okay. Okay. Um, so you first apply to the center. You have to wait for the approval. Uh, you make some payment after your uh, application has been approved. Then you schedule an appointment to access some of the uh, uh, the the the, the uh, archive document, the archive document. Then you also have to go through what they call uh, manner cataloging, uh, where you have to look at what you want a, a list and so on and so forth, and you make a note from those lists. And then you keep going over and over and over. If you are lucky and you find the materials. Um, then you have to pay. So either scan or photocopy. That is the only thing you can do. If you don't want to do that, you are only allowed to read or write out something. You are not allowed to take it out. So if you are applying, you have to say what you want, whether you want a, a scan copy or you want a photocopy. And I can tell you it's very expensive uh, in our own rate. So these are, um, oh goodness. Okay, can you? All right. So um the for my for my analysis, I have uh, two parts. One is contextual analysis, and the other part is a digital analysis of colonial letters. And my intention uh was to use Ancon and R Studio, but I, I was so far I was able to use Ancon very well. Uh, then the R Studio uh, is not very um, very adaptive uh, adaptive to my to my um, data yet, and I think I still have to do something about the coding process. So for the theoretical background, I adopted pragmatics by May two thousand and then. One and pragmatic explain how language users are able to overcome apparent ambiguity with reliance on speakers or interactors, their relationship, the place, manner, time of the linguistic text. And look at May 2007. So May comes up with something called pragmem, um, and this is it. Uh, pragmem explains. Uh, what happens in human interaction, a part is called the activity part, which I'm not going to pay attention to, rather I'm paying attention to the textual part, which we um, very well explain um, colonial letters that I'm trying to work on. So, um, and then based on this, um, you can see in the textual part, you can see some um, um, alphabets like INF, REF, that is inference, um, reference, relevance, voice, share situation knowledge, metaphor, and uh, metapragmatic joker. Based on my data, um, the metapragmatic joker is not, it did not feature okay, because it has to do with uh, gesticulation and the rest. And let us don't actually act like that, you know. All right, so um, all these generates some complex. Uh, uh, some complexity. Well, before I go into that, look at reference. For, in, for inference, um, there is inference to the colonial administration, the community talks, and some other things like that. 
For reference, in the letter, we will see traceable names of people, cities, events, uh, and then response to previous letter and the need based at, uh, uh, the need based uh, on the time in which the letter was written. And what about relevance? There is, some of the letters were mainly based on intervention and some actions that needed to be taken at that time. All right. So um, the share situation, you can see plus, 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 because they are mostly parallel, you know. I'm coming back to something that I deliberately skipped. Then we have metaphor of people, environment, and infrastructure. But for voice, voice in um, using pragmatic, uh, pragmatic act of me, and then with this, we will see the voice of authority in the letter. We see the superior or subordinate relationship. And in some other cases, we see that the letter conveys some form of friendship. Then all these come together to form what we call complexity. Uh, and some of the complex topics include need for abolition of human sacrifice um, at, in that time, uh, at that time of history, uh, non-compliance by some of the subjects, tackling and reducing spread of diseases, chickenpox, cholera, etc. Thankfully, they didn't experience what we are going through now. Um, then, a sentiment of conflict between warring community administration policy, etc., cetera, uh, etc. Cetera. And then now, I applied Antcon 3.5.8 concordance to measure relationship and voice, which is called Pract, which is that is pragmatic acting in May's uh, uh, oscillation. So, and this is what I fed into Antcon. I, I looked for words like inform, oblige, privilege, um, directed, hereby, assured, directing, or please. And then it was interesting uh, uh, that I came up with some of this uh, in, my, uh, in the concordance result. You know, um, we could see, inform you that this, that, you know. So this is to show what we say, we can then begin to measure relationship between the subject and the, uh, and the, 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 the leaders uh, or the administrators at that time. Then we can see the different kind of voice there. So look at this, inform, oblige, and then I, I, I have this just for time uh, constraint uh, directed. You can see the result of, from the concordance using Antcon. And then you can see a lot of command here. Um, for instance, uh, we are, you are hereby instructed. Of course, when you see that, you know that it's a, 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 a boss, uh, uh, a superior is talking to a subordinate. And, and then so on and so forth. So what does this tell us? Um, this tells us that uh, there are many pedagogical relevance of colonial literature due to these complexities, such as the discourse patterns, the historical authenticity, which I call historicity, uh, relationship with the past, which is the understanding of colonial thought, um, the social roles and voices. That is, at that time, the social role and voices what we have to learn now, the social role and voices, what we have to learn in the future. For instance, if you go through the, some of the data, we could see that some of the um, issues discussed include um, um, uh, spread of diseases. And it is so stunning when you look at some of these later in, 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 in the recent of it, that it's as if they were predicting what will happen if people don't do this, if you don't do that, if you allow your communities to do this and that, you know, as, as, as far as 18th century, to be predicting about something that will happen in 2020 or in the, in the years to come, it was, it was, it was stunning to me during uh, my feed experience. And then um, I dare see, uh, I have to say this, that digitalized colonial literature has to be encouraged in the DH research because it is invaluable, it is an invaluable resources. And then it's as it is capable for helping us to ensure easy access uh, to use letters like that for teaching and learning. It also helps in the sustaining historical value of the documents. And 
it's when if we are able to digitalize this, we are able to we'll be able to protect their rich nature for predicting the future, just like I mentioned earlier. Then um, it is also very important to teach in humanity courses like history, classic, critic, writing, and rhetoric. Um, Additionally, it is suitable as a teaching aid for arts and understanding the discursive feature in a piece of writing. If you have to teach my students, I think I can begin to ask them to um, analyze texts like that, that are not in the contemporary form that they are used to. Um, then it, it also has a significance uh, to our social, political, and economic past of uh, our society. Of course, because we have to digitalize it, it is very suitable. Although it is very difficult in this part of the world to access them. And on that note, I think I should say thank you.